In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the life and times of Sir Madu Bello, his contributions to the northern region of Nigeria in particular, and to Nigeria at large, his education in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom, his involvement in politics, his administrative acumen, and his untimely death in January 1966 during the first military coup in Nigeria. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Samadu Bello was born on the 12th day of June 1910 in a place known as Raba in present-day Sokoto State. His father was Malam Ibrahim Bello and held the title of Sakin Raba. Amadu Bello was a descendant of Otman Dansfodio, the founder of the Sokoto Caliphate of Nigeria. Amadu Bello was from a royal family. His great-grandfather, Mohammed Bello, was a sultan. His grandfather, Atiku Naraba, was also a sultan. As noted earlier, his father was a sakin of Raba, also a royalty. The young Amadu Bello was first educated at home. While growing up, there were no formal institutions for learning like we have today. So, what happened was that children in northern Nigeria were exposed to the teachings of Islam at home. In that process, they were exposed to Islamic jurisprudence, the tradition of Islam, the love of neighbor, and the fear and respect of the Almighty Creator. The young Amadu Bello, like children of his time, passed through this phase as it was more of a rite of passage for every child in the North. In the course of time, the British colonial administrators penetrated the Northern Protectorate of Nigeria more and more and in the process, conventional schools were built. Formal education was thus introduced to that region of the country and parents were encouraged to enroll their children in these schools. One of the schools that was built at the time was the Sokoto Provincial School and the young Amadu Bello was enrolled in the said school for his elementary education. On completion of his elementary education, Amadu Bello proceeded to the then Katsina Training College, which was later renamed Barewa College. Barewa College is one of the earliest institutions in Nigeria, and the school has produced hundreds and thousands of people who grew up to occupy several positions of authority in the civil service, the army, the academia, businesses, and the public service generally. The early teachers at Barewa College were British nationals, most of whom were trained in Oxford and Cambridge universities and deployed to present-day Nigeria. All the courses in the college were taught in English language, and English was a mandatory medium of communication. In this process, several graduates of the college were impeccable in written and spoken English. Amadu Bello, for instance, was well grounded in the English language and this could easily be observed in most of his public outings. It should be noted that the Katsina Training College was also a training ground for teachers. Graduates of the school were almost immediately deployed to teach in the elementary schools in their localities. Amadu Bello, upon graduation from the college, was deployed as a teacher to Sokoto Middle School, where he served as an English teacher. It should be noted also that while in elementary and secondary schools, Amadu Bello was known as Amadu Raba. It was later that he changed his name to Amadu Bello 
and was known as such throughout his active days in politics and public service. Amadou Bello later proceeded on scholarship to the United Kingdom, where he studied local government administration. He then returned to Nigeria and participated actively in local administration, traditional leadership, and politics. Amadou Bello was an ambitious young man. At the age of 28 in 1938, he made a bold attempt to become the Sultan of Sokoto. He was a major contender for the coveted seat, but lost to Sadiq Abubakar III. Sultan Sadiq went on to occupy the seat of Sultan for 50 years until his death in 1988. Apparently seeing how influential Amadou Bello was, and also seeing how popular he was and how useful he would be in the administration of the caliphate, the new sultan made the young Amadou Bello the Sadauna of Sokoto. Sadauna means crown prince. Amadou Bello was then promoted to the Sokoto Native Authority Council. It should be noted that the title of Sadauna automatically made Amadou Bello the chief political advisor to the Sultan. The Sadauna was later saddled with other responsibilities by the Sultan, such as being given the mandate to oversee about 46 districts, some of which were very large. But Amadou Bello did not disappoint. Later on, he was recalled to the palace of the Sultan, where he was appointed as the Chief Secretary of the Native Authority. Before now, Amadou Bello had served as District Head of Raba and the Divisional Head of Gasau. The experience garnered by Amadou Bello in these traditional offices turned out to be very useful to him in the political offices he later occupied. Amadou Bello was one of the founders of the Northern People's Congress, NPN. This party attracted the cream de la cream in the northern region of Nigeria and became a formidable political platform for the propagation and promotion of the interests of the region. Bobaka Tafuwa Balewa was one of the key members of this group. Bobaka Tafuwa Balewa was a close friend to Amadou Bello. Through this platform, Amadou Bello was nominated to represent the province of Sokoto in the Regional House of Assembly. As a member of the Assembly, Amadou Bello was a notable voice for the protection of the interest of his people. He was later selected as one of the persons to redraft the Richards Constitution. In 1952, Amadou Bello won a seat in the Northern House of Assembly and became a member of the Regional Executive Council as Minister of Works. He also served as Minister of Local Government and Minister of Community Development for the Northern Region of Nigeria. He performed the functions of these offices creditably to the admiration of his people and of his contemporaries in politics. In 1954, Amadou Bello became the first Prime Minister of the Northern Region of Nigeria. At this time, Nigeria was divided into three regions by the colonial administrators, namely the Eastern Region, the Northern Region, and the Western Region. While serving as Premier of the Northern Region, Amadou Bello worked assiduously for the introduction of formal education to the North and for the development of the region. The North was such a vast area comprising all the states in the present day Northeast, North Central, and Northwest. But the Sadana was at its best in the effective administration of the entire region. In the book titled African Histories and Modernities, Governance and Crisis of Rule in Contemporary Africa, Leadership in Transformation, published 
by Palgrave Macmillan in 2016. It has been noted that Amadou Bello's leadership characteristics was a blend of the religious, traditional, and modern values. This obviously was as a result of his background and educational training at home and abroad. Nigeria gained independence in October 1960, and the country had a new set of political leaders. With Abubakar Tafawa Balewa emerging as the Prime Minister, and Dr. Namdi Azikiwe emerging as the President, and Wafo Rizu as Senate President. The regional structure was retained and Amadou Bello remained as the Premier of the Northern Region of Independent Nigeria. He continued his administration of the region while working in partnership with the government at the center. During his time as Premier, he expanded the scope of education beyond the traditional and religious boundaries and introduced secular subjects to schools. He also constructed new schools and encouraged parents to enroll their children in schools for formal education. On the economic front, he created several institutions such as the Northern Nigeria Development Corporation, NNDC, the Bank of the North, which is still there till today, and also established marketing boards in the North. Amadou Bello is also remembered for the modernization and unification of the diverse people of Northern Nigeria. He enjoyed tremendous respect and cooperation from his people. Amadou Bello also received criticism from some quarters for his, quote, Northernization policy. Amadou Bello was the father of this policy and in it, he meant that vacancies in the civil service of Northern Nigeria should first be filled by Northerners. A lot of people saw this policy as discriminatory of people from the other regions of the country. But Amadou Bello stuck to the policy and did not fail to explain and justify his decision at any point whenever he was asked any question regarding the policy. Other analysts have said that what Amadou Bello did was the same thing that was done by the premiers of the other regions through the employment of their people in the civil service of their regions, but that the only difference was that Amadou Bello voiced out his own template. For Amadou Bello, it was the North and Northerners first. Amadou Bello had a lot of credit in the educational sector of the Northern region of Nigeria. As Premier of the North, he initiated plans to modernize the traditional Quranic education, which was prevalent in the North, and saw to the introduction of secular subjects to the religious schools so as to place children of the North with the children of the other regions of the country. As part of his educational objectives, Amadou Bello ensured that schools were built in every province of the then northern region of Nigeria. He was himself a well-educated person who had the benefit of receiving traditional religious education in his early years and later had the benefit of formal education in the primary school and later at Barewa College and later at the United Kingdom. He then took it upon himself to introduce deliberate policies on education to the northern region of Nigeria. He awarded scholarships to indigents of the north to study in schools within and outside Nigeria. Amadou Bello stands tall in the history of introduction and implementation of formal education in northern Nigeria. Samadu Bello was having the best of time in his administration of the northern region of Nigeria and in his contributions to the government at the center until the night of January 15, 
1966, when his residence was invaded by armed soldiers in what is recorded as the first ever military coup in Nigeria. The coup was bloody. Sir Amadou Bello was killed. His wife Hafsatu was also killed. His driver was also killed. Ahmed Musa, Sir Amadou Bello's senior assistant secretary for security, was also killed. The assassination sent root shock to the entire country and to Africa and to the world. Sir Amadou Bello was a man deeply loved by his people and his assassination was deeply mourned. A day after the assassination, Major Chukuma Kaduna Zeugu granted interview to the foreign press. And in the interview, he stated that the attack on the Sadauna's residence was carried out by troops commanded by him. In the said video, Kaduna Zeugu described the day of the coup as, quote, the longest day, end of quote. Several other persons were assassinated on the same day of the January 15 coup by Chukuma Kaduna Zegu's colleagues in the western region of Lagos and Ibadan. Zabubaka Tafowa Balewa, the then Prime Minister, was killed. Festus Okotiebo, the then Finance Minister, was killed. Ladoke Akintula, the Premier of the western region, was also killed. It was a sad episode, and a new country, Nigeria, which was barely six years old, was thrown into mourning and chaos. But Chukuma and his comrades were disallowed from taking over the reins of power. The Aku was frustrated by loyal soldiers, and Chukuma and Ko were arrested and detained. Power was thus handed over to the most senior military officer in the country, at the time, General Agui Ironsi. Idris Gidado, the former secretary to the government of the Federation of Nigeria, was Sir Madu Bello's personal secretary at the time of the coup. In an interview which he granted to Daily Trust newspaper on December 17, 2017, Idris Gidado narrated the assassination of his master and boss as follows, quote, On the night of the coup, the Sadauna had went upstairs to write his salad address and go to bed, as we were to go to Sokoto the following morning, which was to be the last day of the Ramadan fast. I and other aides were downstairs chatting and we noticed it was getting late and the Premier had still not sent for us. So we decided to go home. When we came out, we were not aware that by then soldiers had already taken positions around the compound. The soldiers invaded the residence of the Premier and gathered everyone in the household in one place. When the soldiers were about to kill the Premier, two of the wives stood up, leaving the first wife half Satu, who said if they must kill the husband, they should kill them together. The premier was then shot along with the wife. When the coup plotters left and the whole place was deserted, we decided that the best thing to do was to get the body removed to the house of the Sultan of Sokoto in Angun, Sakin. The body was then prepared for burial and that was where he was buried. End of quote. Samadu Bello was a great man. His death threw the nation into mourning. He commanded tremendous respect among his people and from people outside the northern region. His death was a painful reality to people of the north and to the nation at large. In his book, Because I Am Involved, published in 1989 by Spectrum Books Limited, Emeka Odumogu Ojuku revolutionary leader of the defunct Republic of Biafra had this to say about Sir Ahmad Bello at page 160 of the book, unquote. Whenever children, the hairs 
offer today, read the history of Nigeria. The one name that must command admiration and one which will, without doubt, attract the largest fan club would be that of Sir Madubelo, the Sadauna of Sokoto. He was a man every inch a prince who bestrode the Nigeria of his day and won, if not admiration, then the respect of friends and foes alike. He was a man who roused the sleeping giants of the north from its centuries-old slumber and within a short span of six years placed it in a dominant position in Nigeria. He laid the foundations of a northern preeminence in Nigeria that has lasted until today and which threatens to last into a future without limit. In all his actions, the Sadauna was regal. End of quote. Ojuku went on to say, unquote, everything Samadu Bello believed in, he believed sincerely. He was both haughty and down to earth. He was loved by those he led, of both low and high esteem. He understood his people and inspired them to heights which were never thought to be possible. As a leader, he was superb and very successful. End of quote. He went on to say, quote, as a Nigerian leader, we all wished he led us all, directed us all, and inspired us all. Tamadu Bello was in every sense a giant. He perceived northern Nigeria as his domain and proceeded by sheer force of character to pull up that section of Nigeria from its bootstraps. He took over the leadership of the north when the region was weak and disadvantaged. He was a great leader of his people. End of quote. Ojuku had served in the north as an officer and later as a commander for several years in the Nigerian army before his declaration of secession from Nigeria. His description of the personality of the Sadauna thus came from his personal knowledge of the sage. Sir Amadou Bello has been immortalized in several ways. His portrait adorns the 200 Naira note produced by the Central Bank of Nigeria and which is a legal tender in the country. Several streets and some major highways in Nigeria have been named after him and one of the leading institutions of higher learning located in the historic city of Zaria in present-day Kaduna State, the Amadou Bello University is named after him. Amadou Bello had three wives at the time of his death and together with his wives, he had three daughters, namely Ino, Aisha and Lubabato. So Amadou Bello, nationalist, Premier of the Northern Region of Nigeria, political strategist, Sadauna or Crown Prince of Sokoto Caliphate, was a man who bore the torch of education, enlightenment and political inclusion for his people of the northern region of Nigeria. He was a man of intellect and was known for his honesty with fellow men. He will be sorely missed for many years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to this channel or click the follow button for regular notifications on every new video.